Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you how to carry on Poppy top lane for season 12 League of Legends. For your runes, you're gonna want Grass with Shield Bash, Bone Plane Revitalize, Biscuits, Time Warp, and start with your Corruption. The main thing you need to focus, focus on in lane is constantly landing your passive and using your Grasp. That is how you're gonna take control of the lane. So right now our Grasp is up, we could look for an auto trade on him. Ideally, we wanna wait till our Q is up though. And we can actually keep our Grasp up and hit him with the, our passive here. And our passive applies it. It's a little ranged attack. If he wants these, he's gonna eat a Q for it. We haven't really missed any CS yet. We're still on all six. If you're gonna have poke someone and you're gonna miss a CS, it's not usually worth it. I queued that minion instead of autoing it because I wanna hit this guy with my passive plus grasp. It's a little bit awkward. Auto attack Q. I have a level advantage. I think he just tried to ignite me there. There we go, finished him off, took a turret shot. Everything is A-OK. -okay. That was kind of funny, tried to ignite. We still had biscuits and corruption. Really wasn't that close. We built an HP lead. So using a tough spot there. Kind of want to get level three and then reset here. Since I had level advantage, I was okay with using E dash just to get to him because I figured we could win the fight. And that is a lot of CS. The wave should reset as well. We can reset. It's a little dangerous to be this far up. As a top laner, 2 minute 50 second mark to 315, you're most likely to be ganked. Most of I'm going to start with their bot lane and path towards top. In fact, I am going to get my word down. On your first back, you're looking to buy uh, as much of this as you can. I'll just pick up this and this, and then we'll head back to lane. Getting early boots is nice on Poppy since you have that ranged passive and your E is very positional to where if you can't get the right angle, it's not very good. Oops, I was trying to set up my items there. Got him with passive, he steps up for that minion, we hit him with Q, Q has a bit of range to it. Uh, Talon just killed himself for a scuttle crab, no joke. Q auto attack. Diana's following this in, so gotta pull back. We see we see where she's at though, so and step back up. Grasp is up. I want to trade some damage. Got him with passive grasp. There's a lot of low minions up here. I'm gonna go ahead and take another corruption potion. Ideally, you want to do it when you're fighting the enemies to get that extra damage as well. I want to uh, stop his passive here in a second. He's sitting so far back though. Got him. Want to take that passive off even if it costs me a bit of mana. As long as I don't lose cannon for it, it's worth. We missed one minion for that. That was arguably not worth. At least our ignite is coming up so we can set up a kill on this guy. Try to walk in behind him. He took a lot of damage from that. We only missed a minion or two for it as well, so it's not too bad. Since we're below half mana and we're almost half health, we'll go ahead and use a biscuit. Biscuits are best used when you're low on health and mana. They give you more the lower you are. You can also use them to surprise people in fights. They'll think they're gonna kill you and then all of a sudden they can't get a bunch of health and mana back pretty much instantly. Oh my goodness. Passives up, so is my grasp. This guy's sitting so far back. We took off his passive at the very least. Got a word down, got biscuits. Oh, I don't know why he's approaching that bush. I guess he knew I laid my control word there. I don't know, that's kind of weird. He's missing a lot of minions for it though, so. He's just trying to use his passive to heal right now. He's missing out on so many minions. It's pretty good for us. I'm gonna miss that cannon, I think. <sighs> At least he's not pressuring us for it. He could actually pressure us now because he has such a HP advantage from his passive. That's what can make this matchup kind of challenging. If Garen's willing to miss CS, you gotta put out defensive cues there. So I threw that out really early to where I'd only hit him with the tip. Whenever you throw out cues early, you're not gonna land both parts of it. You're usually just gonna get the initial damage. 
I want to keep my grasp and passive up to poke him with. That's why I used my Q on the minions there. Sometimes it's better to last it with your Q if your grasp and passive is up. You can see that both of them right there. You got to manage both of them. This wave's starting to push towards me since it's reinforcing here. Oh man, that sucks. I'm going to go ahead and use a biscuit. I'll cream this guy into the wall. He's just not stepping up is the thing. He's giving up so much CS. He has half our CS. As long as we don't die to him, we're in a really good spot. He could kill us here. Especially if his flash is up. I'm going to start backing off. I need a gank or I need to just reset. I'm going to hope he slow pushes this, not realizing I'm backing and I have cannon wave. So I should be able to get back here pretty quick. I got tier two boots just so I can survive the ganks. Diana's already been top once. And uh, it's going to help out a lot in this matchup. Normally, you want to go for your Frostfire before you get your Tier 2s. I also wanted to get back to lane and not miss out on minions. He's kind of pushing it slow. Should be able to catch most of this and maybe even set up a freeze on him. We have a uh, 17 CS lead. Fairly substantial. I need to thin this out. Set up a freeze. The enemies only need four more minions than you have. And here they have a lot more than four. Gonna do our best to last hit. It's going to cost us some mana to hold this. What we want to do is pull them back a bit. Like, just like so. Keep dragging them back and give ourselves some room to breathe. You don't want it too close under your turret. You want it about right here, maybe a little bit closer. Grasp is up. We can trade with them. Keep our trade short if you're, since he has Conqueror. If you're playing against a Conqueror or Lethal Tempo Champion, you want to try to whittle them down first before you go in for anything crazy. And now we have it in a freeze to where he's going to have to keep stepping back up, get him with a Q, keep the damage trade short so his Conqueror doesn't do anything for him. Conqueror and Lethal Tempo only give value in very long extended fights and trades. And fights to the death from full HP. Ooh, I was going to miss that minion. I might have just inadvertently push the wave there did not want to miss a minion there we go it's his melee minions are tanking like crazy beautiful I still have the wave in a freeze he's just not willing to step up for it he knows I can out trade him in the short term I think he's hoping I shove it I'm gonna go for Q max first E max second W max last W is not that useful in this matchup because he doesn't have a dash I, I can, a dash or a leap I can cancel with my W, unfortunately. Got him with a straight auto as he went in the last hit. There goes the grasp. I, ooh, yeah, we still got that though. Auto attack Q. That was kind of awkward. Still got most of it. He took so much damage from that trade. I think our wave might be pushing now because I was tanking some minions. Might have also AoE'd them a bit with my Q. He's being very, very patient. Almost got it. Cancel the autos if you need to so you don't miss the creeps. There goes his passive. I'm surprised he stepped up for that. He's been so patient. And then he blew his passive as he was starting to get back a lot of health. Needed to just let me keep dumping this. Oh, there we go. Buckler up. He's about to eat it. There it is. Pick it up. Hit him with a Q. He backs off. He gets hit by the second part because he's a goofball. Try to hit him with another Q. He backs up. Let's get him with a buckler here. Run, 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 run. Turret doesn't quite get us. Now he knows I can threaten the kill. He still doesn't want to leave turret. Diana's not giving him really any help. I have tier 2 boots, but so does he. He rushed tier 2s. It's so annoying. At least he's missing out on a lot of XP. I can get to that plant. That, that, that'll be my escape, is that plant. He can do pretty well against the minions. They don't throw off his passive, unfortunately. He's 
still playing a really safe. Maybe he thinks my jungler's here. I don't know. It's giving me a little bit too much space though. We'll pull the wave back. Diana's bot side. I'll go ahead and leave a ward down just in case. And Garen's not going to let me kill him. We are up nearly triple CS on him. If you're playing against the lander, just won't let you kill him. Don't get impatient. Just freeze on him and choke him out slowly. It may not be a whole lot of fun. Switch. You do what you got to do, though. Going to turn around and get him with the Q. Got him with both parts of it. Got him with grass passive. Like to pick that up. Oof, took the turret shot. That was unfortunate. Grass passive, there we go. Oh my god, I just missed so many minions. Missed like four in a row. Wanna hit him with passive again. His passive's up, he's glowing green. I just took two turret shots for no reason. I think Diana's here. He's acting weird. I can get my uh, Frostfire here. Oh, Diana's bot. I'll stay. Got him. He burned his flash and ignite for that. He needed a little bit more damage before he R'd. His R is a big execute. So he had to wait on that. Since he is behind, he didn't quite have the damage. Plus, I had plated. Those plated's helped a lot. And we'll TP back the lane. You can't TP to any minions until the 14 minute mark. You can only TP to turrets. This guy's in big trouble now that we have Frostfire. He's literally dead now. He just killed himself. I think. Auto attack Q. I'm gonna ignite him. Yeah, he's dead. He was really, really greedy. He didn't respect the fact that I had just spent my gold and the fact that we both knew he'd already used his sums. He thought he could get away with, oh, he probably thought, oh, I'll trade with her. I want it back anyways. I'll trade and then leave. I'll scrape some of her health. Poppy can't heal the same way I can. And I can't, I can't heal the same way he can. Turret plates are about to fall off. There's no reason for me to push here. I'll just freeze it. As much as you guys may not like to hear that. <laughs> I know freezing is the most exciting thing in the world. Bonk. It's going to be hard to freeze now that I frost fire. It gives you AoE damage when it's up. On top of that, uh, if anything's close enough to you, it gets burned. So freezing is going to be a little bit trickier now. But it'll actually be better if I last hit with my Q, funny enough. Because if I tipper it just right, I can kill one minion at a time without really AoEing the rest of them. We still have this in a pretty good spot. Oh, that sucked. Oh, that really sucked. Got that one, I believe. Didn't really see it happen. There's Garen 10 years later. Hit him with my passive. Pick that up. He's not full item yet. I'll trade this down. Q auto attack. This Ignite should still be on cooldown. Got him with Q tipper and he's dead. Very nice. Against champions that actually have dashes like Riven or Diana, Kha'Zix, Tristana, Action, Talon, the Leona dash. Against anything like that, if you have your W on, it'll not only cancel their dash, but do damage to them and CC them. Against Garen, he doesn't actually have a true dash in his kit. So against him, we can only really use our W as a speed up or hold on to it so we don't get ganked by the Diana. Because if our W is up, it's pretty much impossible to die from a gank. Big speed up, plus they can't. she can't dash on me. We're about to get this turret and then we can roam. Poppy's not a huge split pusher. She's more of a team fighter. Once you get the outer turret, there's really no reason for you to stay there. You should go and try to get the other outer turrets. So our bot lane got outer. We'd want to go mid. Looks like Garen's ticked off, so he's going bot lane. He does not want to lane versus Poppy anymore. I don't blame him. Even though Garen is technically one of Poppy's harder matchups, if Garen doesn't get any jungle support, Poppy will still win it. It's just the truth. Poppy has way more poke, and she can win... The majority of the trades so 
Garen needs a gank. If Garen can get a kill on Poppy pre-6, Poppy can't do anything at that point. She can't poke him down. Eon, you to get on top of her. Mixing in a lot of autos. This chick hurts. She really, really hurt. Nice. That really, really hurt. I need some magic resist. She's not... She doesn't do that much damage. She thought she could just go in and pinch someone off. Action was too slippery, so she had to turn her attention on me. That didn't pan out. Looks like Garen's coming to group. I'm too low. I'm going to reset and probably TP back somewhere. I can't really even afford what I want, which sucks. Might just sell my... Uh, Corruption. I don't really want it though. All right, I'll sell it. I hate doing it. Selling corruption is so crap. Leaving base when I could have Winter's Approach is probably worse. Winter's Approach is so cracked. I'll be pushing for Herald next, so we want to shove this wave out, force someone to uh, catch it, and then we can take it while they're catching. Waste our W there. Probably shouldn't have done that. Oh, hey, Heimerdinger. Auto attack Q. Pick up my thing. Finish him off. That's kind of funny that he was trying to solo that. You can't just solo objectives unless you know where the enemies are. It's way too dangerous. Someone happens to come up like we do. Poppy's E stuns people into any kind of structure. Trundle Pillar, Anivia Wall, Orn Q. Any normal walls, turrets, inhibitors, nexus, any kind of structure. You shouldn't have taken that since I started it. Oh. Don't know if we can actually solo Diana Rock. She has Conqueror. Maybe now we can because we have a uh, Winner's Approach. We'll word that off. I'll attack Q. We want to hit her with a QR. The R will hold her inside of the Q and we'll hit her with both parts of it. I need to pick up my buckler and my buckler literally disappeared as I was a half away, like a half an inch away from it. That would have given us a gnarly 500 shield. Our cooldowns would have been back up and we could have uh, probably survived there. We are taking mostly magic damage. So we're going to want to go for force of nature third item. That'll help keep us alive. It has been buffed recently too, so it's a really, really strong item. We'll get the Negatron Cloak. They have uh, Sork Shoes. Diana's about to have the Sorks. It's going to give a lot of value. Sork Shoes, Pierce, 18 magic. Resist. This gives 50, so it's almost like they don't even have Sork Shoes. Should be able to out-tank Garen. Garen with uh, Berserker Reeds isn't particularly tanky. That builds more for solo kills since he lost lane with that build he's not going to give much value in team fights <laughs> my team is very auto attack heavy with the action caitlin you should be able to shred him really well i'll we out here if i see her go for it doesn't look like she is nope yeah i can't get anything there oh well shove wave and play for objectives Play for Drag Soul. Wish I, wish I got the Herald. I love Herald. It's my favorite objective. Best thing League of Legends has ever added. I'm gonna dash to her. Push her into my team like an Alistar headbutt. Got him right in the wall. Q, he's dead. Whenever you use your R, you ideally want a Q, then R. That way they're held inside of your Q and you'll hit them with both sides of it. Because your Q goes down, there's does damage, and then on the second part it blows up and does damage again. So Q, R, lots of damage. You usually don't use your R to knock them away. It's not useful unless you're trying to escape. You, you almost never charge it, literally. Nine out of ten times you only use it if you're trying to escape. And that is it, guys. The enemies had had enough. If you enjoyed this poppy top lane commentary guide, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.
Looking at damage dealt to enemy champions, we have the second highest in the game. I'm happy with that. Not surprised since we're poking Garen non-stop. Looking at damage taken, we had a high damage taken, even higher than Garen. That is a little surprising because we're constantly hitting him. Looking at runes, Grass did 1,000 damage, healed us for 825. It doesn't tell you how much it increased your max health by, but every time you hit someone with your Grass, it increases it by, I believe, like 4. So it probably increased our health somewhere around 150. Shield Bash did a total of 229 damage. Whenever you pick up a shield and do damage, your next hit does a little bit of bonus. Bone Plating shielded us for uh, 450. Revitalize, the bonus healing was 437. Bonus Shielding, 914. We used the biscuits and time warp tonic was spicy. All in all, I can see why Poppy is the highest win rate and pick rate top laner right now. Definitely a player before she gets nerfed.